So as you can just see in the last demo, when you we built the SharePoint solution, and we were logged in as an administrator account, and that's typically what happens when you're developing uh, on your own uh, setup, your own um, environment that you've created against your own SharePoint site. Uh, but then when you go to test it, um, another user, maybe maybe you don't test it, but maybe you promote this solution up to a higher level, like a QA server or something, or staging server, and then that's where you run into these types of security errors. So the code that works for you fails for a normal user because that user lacks the ownership of the site where the code is deployed. So these exceptions are very easy to identify and fix. So the second type of, of error is, is worse, and that's when you, you don't properly manage system resources by properly disposing of the object instances when the resources are no longer needed. And this, and this is uh, one of the perils of working with the SharePoint object model, is there are a few objects that are disposable, namely the SP site object and SP web. Whenever you create those, uh, those need to be disposed of. So the previous example that we worked on, it ran, but failed when we logged in as a visitor. And that was because the default runtime I identified is the authenticated user. So one user, when I was the administrator of the account, had permission to enumerate all the webs of the site collection, and then that test user account didn't. But you could actually assume for a moment that the code ran under the permission of the system account. And when I say the system account, I'm talking about the, uh, the identity of the application pool that the SharePoint web application is using. But let's say, for example, that we elevate the permissions of the code that was just running. So even though we're logged in as test user, but we wanted to elevate those permissions, well, with the current code that we have right now, it would still fail because we're using the SP context object and SP context dot current. That's gonna if we call SP context dot current and get the current user like we were doing, it's still gonna give us the current user and that still has the same security context. Even if we try to elevate the privileges, we can't elevate the privileges using the uh, the current context. So a lot of times. What you have to do is you have to create code that performs actions on behalf of a user that doesn't have permissions. So it doesn't have permissions to do what it needs to do or perform the action. So in those cases, we need to elevate permissions. But there's a way of doing that. And the way of doing that is via impersonation. And the number one important thing is you have to create a new site collection. You can't use the SP context current site. You can't use that because it's associated with the context of that lower privilege user. So you have to instantiate a new site collection object. And one way of doing that is SharePoint actually gives us a static utility method in the SP security class called run with elevated privileges. And it accepts an anonymous method or an instance of code run elevated, which is a delegate, and it runs with a full control permission set. So what that effectively allows us to do is impersonate the service account or the application pool account. And we don't have no user ID or password has to be entered. It just, it just gets elevated. So whatever permissions the service account has, when you call run with elevated permissions, then that's what your code will be running as. And it does, in order for it to take on that security context, you have to create a new instance of SP site. So if your code is adding or modifying or deleting elements of a site on behalf of users who don't have permissions to perform the operation directly, we need to use the uh, run with LA privileges. Sometimes we may be doing uh, an update while we're in that elevated privileges state. And in those cases, especially if it's on a, uh, an HTTP GET request, SharePoint considers that to be an unsafe update. It doesn't consider it to be safe 
For example, to update a, an item in a list while you're on doing an HTTP GET. And there is a way around that. What you can do is on either the, uh, the web or the list, whatever you're trying to update, there's a property called allow unsafe updates. So in this case for the web, we would just say, for this web, we'd say, okay, allow unsafe updates, set it to true. And then once we're done, call update. And right now, let's just go ahead and take a look at that. Let's, let's fix the error that we just had in the previous demo and let's get it to work for that uh, test user account so they can iterate through all the lists. Okay, back into our, our web part now and we need to elevate the privileges so we need to change a few things. So first thing we're going to change is I'm going to refactor this stuff out into a method I'm going to extract the method. I'm just going to call it, we'll just call it write output. And in write output, we need to change a few things. So first thing I'm going to do We're going to talk about the using statement later, but for right now, this is a habit that I don't want to break. So I'm going to keep this habit up here of using the using statement, but we will we'll address it later. So we're still going to use the SP context here, but we're going to we're just using it to find out the current website that we're in. So this is the proper way to if we're going to elevate permissions. So when we're elevating permissions, we have to create uh, a new instance of SP site. And originally we were using SP context, current site, and then the current web. But we can't use those because when we elevate permissions, it's not elevating. It's still using the current whoever the current user is logged in as. So we have to explicitly create new objects. And what we can do is we can say SP security dot run with elevated privileges. Whoops. Let me put a dot. Run with elevated privileges. And I'm just going to use a uh, lambda here. It's a little bit easier. So I can go right to my method. I forgot to pass in the writer. So what this is doing, we're saying we're going to tell the run with elevated privileges method to go ahead and execute this method write output as the uh, the system account or as the it's going to be running it with full control rights so as the account of the, the service account or the application pool account so we can go ahead let me let's recompile this make sure it compiles and then let's deploy it. Now we're still logged in as that user, so I'm going to refresh this page. Okay, so it just refreshed the page and got 
the old access required again. So let's go back and check our code. Just make sure we did everything right. And I can see right away, I refactored to a new method and we didn't get rid of this. So we'll, <laughs> what essentially was happening is we were still getting the error before we elevated privileges. We were getting that security error. So we need to delete this. So now when our code runs, now it's going to actually run with elevated privileges before it tries to write out everything. So let's go ahead and just deploy that again. I'm just going to close the browser, test it as, the, uh, as my local admin account just to make sure it works. Okay, so web part's still working, so I'll close this. Now open up the browser as a different user. So we'll use the test user. And we'll go to our site. And sure enough, now we're running. You can see we're running as test user and we're able to iterate through all the subsites and the lists for each site and we're not getting any more security errors. So in the .NET framework there are many classes that use finite resources like file handles, database connections, and graphic resources and the .NET runtime has a garbage collector that it's going to periodically run to release those object instances that are no longer in use, but there's no guarantee that the garbage collector is going to run before you run out of memory. So the way that's handled in the .NET framework is if somebody is creating a class that, ha that does have these what are called unmanaged resources that need to be cleaned up, what happens is they typically they implement an interface called iDisposable and iDisposable has a method called dispose. So any object that you're working with, you should always check to see if it implements iDisposable, if it imp implements the dispose method, and then you need to call that. And so in SharePoint, there are the two main classes that you're going to deal with uh, most of the time are SP Site and SP Web, and those do implement iDisposable. They need to be disposed of. And a, a nice way to wrap that in the .NET framework when you're using C Sharp is you can use the using statement. So the using statement will allow you to wrap up the creation of that object and then everything within the body of that using statement will automatically get disposed called on it. Even if there's a an exception in there, um, what the compiler does is it actually just creates a finally block for you and so that in the finally block that will actually get that dispose method will actually get called for you. So this is the the preferred method of calling dispose is to use using. And you'll and you you saw on the code and from the last demo that I was using the using statement around the SP site and the SP web objects. So some general rules though for SharePoint is that you don't want to call dispose from SP context because we didn't originate creating those objects, meaning us as developers. Those are getting handed down to us from a higher level. So when we go to that, we're inside a SharePoint web part or an application page, any part of the SharePoint UI, that's being controlled from a higher level. And something else is popping into SP context. Our code doesn't populate SP context. And so when you get spcontext.site or .web, you don't want to dispose those. Only use dispose if it's something that uh, you used that was new. So when you're enumerating through all of the webs or webs, or if you call open web, then you need to dispose of that web when you're done using it. Same thing with parent web or root web. You don't need to dispose of those as well.